Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. Hey, I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's cure for seeing and get underway. How can you harness your greatest passions to create a business and life you love. Can you tap into a hustle, get it done mindset while simultaneously prioritizing a life work balance? Ashley Walter says yes. Ashley is an expert on guiding individuals towards reaching their personal goals and she discusses ways to apply these same tactics in a home business. Ashley has an exciting story to tell, breaking out as an entrepreneur in the competitive health and wellness industry. With her Living with Ashley app, Ashley shares how to be a differentiator in an oversaturated market. So greetings, Ashley Walter. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Say hello to our audience. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me today. Hi. Thanks for coming on our show. So you're dialing in literally from the Windy City in Chicago? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And today it is quite windy, but at least it's sunny. Hey, you got to look on the bright side. There you go. So you know? so <laughs> well, thanks for connecting in. Thank you. Well, let's get to know you better. Ashley, what inspired you to start your own business with a healthy living app? Interesting question, and one that is generally long-winded, but I'll make it concise. Long-winded from the Windy City. <laughs> right? It's, you got to bring the words back. Um, tying it all together, I will say um, I grew up a, a competitive athlete, um, loved athleticism. My mother was very into nutrition and healthy living um, just as a hobby, and so I grew up that way. Um, so in my 20s, when I got slammed with not just graduating college and needing to find a job and be in the real world, um, so we all have to do that, yeah. um, I got slammed with five or six medical issues that were extremely unexpected, ranging from being diagnosed with Crohn's disease to uh, nut, an adult onset nut allergy. Um, I went into anaphylactic shock to all sorts of other things, not to bore you with all of them, but a lot of them stemmed back to diet, energy, and just generally living healthy. Not that I wasn't living healthy, but there are things that living healthy is even more important in those situations. So I had to change my diet. I had to remove certain foods like gluten and dairy. And as a 23 year old, you know, you're just kind of used to, hey, I'm eating healthy things, but I had to get very specific and very, very, very um, diligent about those changes. So the young age of 23, you had to figure out how to turn lemons into lemonade? Yeah, and this was when nobody was gluten-free, and it was like, you got to drive oh. 20 miles to get to, I sound like my, my parents, like walking barefoot in shoes in the snow to school. I did have like 20 miles to get, you know, a lot of gluten-free products. A lot of things didn't taste that good. Um, so it was a big adjustment back then, and even just with the nut allergy and having to carry an EpiPen and the anxiety that comes with that, all those things. However, I turned it into a silver lining, like I did today's cold day with the sun shining, and I made it a career. And it's one of those things where when you combine something that I was already um, prolific and I have a degree in journalism, I took that and my communication skills with the Masters of Holistic Nutrition, combined them together and started to approach people as far as fitness as well, because I became a certified personal trainer to get myself through the grad school. So you kind of found a certain sort of a small niche within uh, where you were going that um, you know you discovered through some of the hardships you had to go through early on in life. Yeah, and as most people say, you learn by doing. Um, and so for me, it was I was learning how to be a nutrition professional by myself being my first client. And that's the easiest way to put it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, you are in a dynamic but oversaturated mar market. Ashley, can you tell us a little more about working as a health and fitness entrepreneur? Sure. I think one of the things that most people need to recognize, especially about being an entrepreneur, is I put my time in. I did six or seven years in all facets of the industry, working in commercial gyms, in corporate wellness, in one-on-one. -on -one. I went and worked for a I won't say who it was, but a very large um, meal delivery nutrition service um, to get experience working in the corporate part of nutrition. I went and I did my due diligence and I also helped with operations and marketing so that I learned how to run my own by doing, um, not just by having the education of being a nutrition professional. So that's where I started round one. Then round two for me was really trying to figure out how to take my business and further it along to make it different from everybody else's. So problem solution is what I think being an entrepreneur is. And my problem was finding what people weren't getting from other people. 
outside of my personality, you know. <laughs> well, so, yeah, you know, you, you, you are in kind of a big niche that's growing uh, by leaps and bounds every year, but you found a, 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 a certain part of it, yes. something that, um, you know, others were, weren't paying as close of attention to. But I like your approach also, where you actually got some on-the-job working training, not just like learning it, learning the business yourself, which so many entrepreneurs go in to something they may not know really anything about. And then they, you know, they struggle, they lose money, they have to relaunch their business in different ways. But you got some actual, you know, let's just call it corporate experience that you could yeah. then apply right away. And that probably increased your probabilities for success. Well, that too. And you can also see it, I had great experiences and every place I worked was fantastic, but you also can figure out where they're dropping the ball. And a lot for me was then how I migrated into what I do now, which is my service is 24 seven. I'm available, whether it's on my app or whether it's one-on-one -on -one with clients. I call myself a concierge because I am literally on demand. If they need me, they text me. If they're at the grocery store, they text me. What is this? What should I buy? What am I doing this? They text me from a restaurant and ask me to vet the menu for them and what to order. Because when you're out of sight, you are truly out of mind. <laughs> when you're virtual, you're virtual. But that, that, yeah. you've really summed up what it's like to be an entrepreneur now. It's 24 seven. I mean, you know, you've got to, you know, everybody knows their smartphone is there. And I think people just are, are responding work-wise and they don't even realize it might be 10 o'clock at night. It's just, it's just become the habit that's out there. This is true. I also think with healthy living, it takes one error, like a domino effect, to start having you fall off the path of making like, oh, well, you know, today I ate poorly one meal, but I, I didn't gain any weight. I don't feel like crap. So, you know, that's okay. I'm fine. So then they make a bad decision the next time. And if I'm not there to hold them accountable, accountability is a huge thing right now. If I'm not there, then the dominoes keep falling. I guess they say so, good habits have to be habit forming and you got to form those habits. 100%. So Ashley, how do you set yourself up for success while working remotely? Do you have any time management tips you'd like to share? <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, my time management comes from, uh, and we talked about this before, uh, off, off air, um, I, I am a slightly OCD person who used to believe in perfection. Aren't all entrepreneurs a little bit OCD <laughs> though? <laughs> Yes, type A is is 100% one of those things. And I, I am someone who is considered a perfectionist. And um, for lack of a better term, I will say with OCD comes the word control. And for me, two things helped me in this area get to where I am. This is why I like to help people not have to have these experiences, except for the first one. So getting pregnant and having my daughter was one of the first amazing benefits because having a child and someone else to prioritize if you're not good at prioritizing yourself is an amazing way to step back from working because you have something else that is there depending on you that's not just your job and your clients so having her was such a great way for me to say okay i don't feel guilty pushing things aside because i really need to be a mom right now so that's one of those things but well, you know, I, I comment, that's, that's such a good point to bring out because they say that perception or perfection is the enemy of good enough. And the term there is that if you are achieving perfection, you'll just carry things out to a degree and you'll, you'll neglect important parts of your business. So it sounds like having your daughter and setting those priorities, you were able to kind of maybe see the bigger picture on, yeah. you know, spreading your, your time and effort out and not just homing in on one area and overdoing it. A hundred percent. And the perfection the misnomer of perfection too is there is no perfection in reality because once we all get somewhere, don't we want more? Don't we want right. something else? It's never, we've never gotten to a point where we've reached self-actualization and we've got our perfect self. So once you drop that down and you say it doesn't exist and you really believe that, then it's one of those things that happens. But as far as buckling down and time management and prioritizing life. Um, unfortunately, but fortunately, silver lining, uh, several years ago, I was in a very traumatic accident and I suffered a triple brain hemorrhage and was in a coma. And oh. when I woke up and had to adjust my life, I recognized that the adjustments for me, when I took stock, because hindsight's always 20, 20 people, right? When I took stock and how I was managing my time, I really recognize that at a time when I needed to prioritize my health and to get better from something, it took that 
to make me prioritize myself <laughs> and my health. Well, it's funny how when life deals, you really reset, readjust your priorities. Yeah. And we've all dealt with some illnesses, but you're right. You know, you could have all these priorities, but suddenly, you know, your health is in jeopardy. You've got to make some lifestyle changes to accommodate that health. That goes, that's on, that becomes your A-list. And you've 100%. got to work around that. And I deal with being a healthy living professional, but also an entrepreneur. And that's really like an oxymoron because entrepreneurs tend to not take care of themselves because the hustle is the most important thing. And to learn that if I'm not focusing at my best, if I'm not healthy and happy, then my work suffers first because I'm not able to have the mental clarity or to have the ability to push forward. And I also think my creativity suffers, my communication skills with clients suffer. So you just have to be at your best first. And that goes for being a mom. And you know what I find with that? Um, when I go to the gym, that's for some reason, that's when the creativity kicks in. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I could never be creative around my office, but I'll, I'll go to the gym and just be walking around and have this great, I like, why didn't I think of that? I would never have thought about it in a million years, but just walking around the gym and changing your environment and changing yeah. the people you're interacting with. Um, you know, that can, that can be very important to your, you know, to your creative self. But I also like what you said about you know, if you're not, you know, being healthy helps your performance. And if you think, you know, you're working that extra hour and, you know, taking away from, you know, physical fitness and eating right in the long time, it'll take a toll. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, you're, gonna, it, it, you're just going to be producing less. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. actually, what do you do to maintain a healthy work-life balance and a, you know, healthy, happy lifestyle amid all these stress and work pressures that you have? Well, here comes my type A back into play that works for me is um, I really try to teach my clients that scheduling is necessary. So I block out my me time. And I also have a little alert that goes off on my phone that alerts me to take my brain away from screen time. So we all, you know, have computer, no matter what job you're in, you're, you look at a computer sometimes or you're standing in the same place or your brain is so in the same area, you have to disconnect your brain and take it someplace else. Like you just said, a different environment or a different mode or a different something, and you have to step down and give yourself that decompression time. I Wait, have, so you call it a detach from screen time? What were you saying, like no screen time? No screen time. You step down, you detach your brain from looking at something, from hyper-focusing, and you take time to let it relax. And a lot of my brain therapy, cognitive therapy, goes into learning all these things, how important they are. But I will take every 30 minutes, I'll take five minutes, and I'll step down away from any sort of screen I'm looking at. Or again, if someone's standing in the same position, I'll move and I'll get myself. You know, if you have the Apple Watch, um, yeah. it's like when they say to breathe or to stand up. It's those little yeah, that's alerts. too much. I can't. Uh, I couldn't have and an I, Apple Watch. I turned off my alerts because I like to work on my own schedule. <laughs> but <laughs> I do have the ability to where I talk to people and I say, hey, like, are you checking in with yourself? And so on my calendar, I have things that set an alert that beep to me. Hey, Ashley, like, have you stepped away? Have you stopped? Have you whatever? And it's not just for an hour a day when you get home. It really is throughout the day because that's where I find that your clarity starts to really go away when you are like this. And you know, I think just listening to you there, I think when I go to the gym, I, sh I should like not look at my smartphone. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Just like that should be screen free time. So maybe yeah. I'll, I, I keep walking around looking at my phone at the gym. So uh, well, you I, inspired me. I'm going to keep it in my locker. I tell you, it's alarming. I, I So again, I have a child and we have, she has an iPad connected to my Apple account. And every week when you set up the screen time, you get an alert how much time you've been on your screens. And I only started looking at it because of her, because I really try to keep her away from technology as much as possible at this stage. And I look at my screen time and I literally get disappointed in myself because I'm spending way too much time online. And it's, it's just, you have to recognize that it's not healthy, but also it's that, t that means you're not giving yourself those breaks that are important. And it's the same thing as like a rest day. If you're someone who works out, fantastic. I highly encourage it for many reasons. But if you work out seven days a week, every single day of the month, you're not giving your body a chance to rest either. No, no. Yeah. I just, I got to take two days off. You know, I, yeah. I, I just like take Saturday and Sunday off to try to hit it. But yeah, you're, I, I know people that go seven days a week and, you know, 
they're, they're, they seem to be burned out. You know, you see with the gym, I'm like, I've gone 14 days straight and you know, you can tell they need a break. Yeah. It's the same thing with your eyes, with your body, with everything. Well, Ashley, what lessons have you learned over the years that helped you and your brand grow? Interesting. Um, the first lesson I've, I will reiterate is uh, perfection doesn't exist. Um, the second one is I, I don't, and this applies to my clients as far as nutrition, but also to entrepreneurs is in life, it doesn't bode well for anybody when you comparison shop. So don't compare yourself to other people's businesses that might have started after you or before you or have more success than you. However, you're um, saying success is uh, is determined. Also, sorry. That's all right. That's part of being an entrepreneur. Also, exactly. Um, it's a client. Also, um, the fact that most people, when you are going out and you're looking at other people's bodies or other people's lives, um, for example, comparing everything to social media. Um, I love social media. It's a, it's a great vehicle for me. However, when you're going on there and you see everybody looks perfect and happy and whatnot, it's not always the true story. So comparing yourself to other people isn't going to do anything for you. Social media can get demoralizing. I mean, you're just like looking out there. It's just like all it seems to do is add to my to-do list when I go on there. And, you, and, you know, you got to keep that in balance too. Like, you know, ask where is that, you know, where is that social media getting you? It's a time. It's a time sum. It is. It's a time sucker. It's it's also one of those things if you're super sensitive and you can't you don't want to deal with criticisms or if you go on there and all you're doing is thinking negative things about yourself because you're comparing yourself to other people, then you have to recognize either you shift your mind or you turn it off. And well, so, you've got to have a social media presence. You know, it just adds to your brand, but I guess you've got to keep it all in balance. But let's talk a little bit about goal setting. Ashley, share any insights that will help our audience. Uh, prepare for greater success in 2020 through goal setting? So I think what most people do inherently, the first thing is they, they do all or nothing goals. So it's, and it's a lot of times set very unrealistically. So for me, I first address a client and I say, what are your goals? I ask them first before telling them how to do it. And I get a lot of the uh, bikini body in 30 days. And <laughs> I want to, um, you know, have a, an eight pack in two weeks. And, and I'm being obviously exaggeration here, but this happens a lot. And so I think what I try to train people to do is, first of all, you have to have different types of goals. So I relate goals to a marathon, which when you've run them, and I've run them, you recognize, like, I don't think about the finish line when I'm starting. I think about, okay, I want to get to mile three, and this is the pace I want to be at, and this is what I want to do. How do I want to feel when I'm at mile eight? So all of your goals lead to lifelong goals, but you have to start with immediate. Immediate being, hey, um, so you know in your head you're not going to the gym. So it's like, hey, I need to start going to the gym. That's an immediate goal, and you got to start going. Then you have to have short-term goals. And your short-term goals are gonna be within the next like month or two. Then long-term goals next year, lifelong goals after that. So if you wanna lose 50 pounds, that would be like a year goal, right? And then lifelong would be say to maintain it. But you have to also set extrinsic goals when you have your physical goals, right? That I just gave examples of, you have to set your intrinsic ones too. So How often for should me, you like re reevaluate your goals? Is that something in, you know you take a look at each day or week? Well, so that's why I have people write it down, and depending on what your goals are, then I will tell you the frequency. But generally, I have my goals. I have post-it notes everywhere. Um, I have a document on my phone that's in my notes where I can re-email it to myself, or I can look back on it, and I set alerts in my calendar. We're going back to this where every month. I check in with myself. Well, hey. that's important. That is so important with goals because you brought up the important point where you need to write it down, not just kind of have it in the back of your mind, but you also have to tie it into your, you know, the systems that you work with, like your calendar yep. or action items, or that goal is just going to sit out there if it's got no way to get, you know, implemented each day. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you also have to have a system of accountability. So obviously I'm here for people to work with, but you know, when I have a goal, I tell my significant other. And I tell people that I'm around or that I eat with most often. And I say, hey, you know, if it's about healthy living, I'm going to share it so that I know I can build a support system too. Because if you have a significant other and you guys cook together or you're making dinners together or your schedule affects their schedule and they don't know your goals, how are they supposed to adjust for you but also, you know, be there for you? Oh, well, they've got to kind of hold you accountable. Yeah. You know, accountable with your goals. 
Well, Ashley, Walter, this has been a wonderful discussion on being a health, healthy living entrepreneur. Do you have any final points you'd like to share? Uh, my final point would be if you don't know, if you've tried it before and it hasn't worked and you've gone, gone at it alone and it doesn't have to be me, it could be anybody, is find somebody that can be a coach for you, whether it be a mentor for starting your own business or someone who's going to help you with healthy living to help you identify these goals and then hold you accountable throughout just so that you can get somewhere where you know you can depend on yourself. We all need someone to help us get over the finish line. Well, Ashley Walter, thank you for being such a great guest on the Home thank Business Podcast. Thank you for having me and stay warm. Uh, yes, you too. Uh, to learn more about Ashley Walter and our healthy living platforms, visit livingwithashley.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us in this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising. Subscribe to our newsletter. Please visit our sponsors. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Captain Henderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based biz day.